there's a wide variety of different tasks in HCI that we could model. But the most simple or basic task that we have is probably target selection. So if we have a button and we want to know how long does it take a user to press this button. And this is exactly what Fitz Law describes that we will look at now. What we will also look at is what's called the index of difficulty that basically is the basis of Fitz Law and help us to estimate how difficult the task is. And we will look at how to determine device specific constants that we need in order to make predictions. So how does the task look like that we have here? Let's imagine we have a tablet and the only thing that's on the tablet are two white circles. And then the task for a user or a participant is go from one circle with your finger to the other as fast as possible. And if you reach it, go back to the previous circle again as fast as possible. And as we go from one circle to the other, we could ask ourselves, well, how long does it take? Or on which factors does it depend on the time a user needs? Well, it at least depends on two factors. One is the distance from one circle to the other. And while well, the larger the distance is, the longer it takes. And then there's another factor. And that is the size of the target. And we call it the width of the circle in this case. And this type of task, well, these circles, we don't find them often, right? But uh, there are similar tasks all over interactive systems. We have icons, and we have icons on all kinds of systems. We have them on smartphones and tablets, on even on smartwatches or desktop computers, we have icons. We have buttons. We have all kinds of things that we want to click or select as fast as possible. And well, this is exactly what Fitz Law tries to model. So the, the model has been developed by Paul Fitz uh, back in the days in the 50s. And Paul Fitz wasn't an HCI researcher. He came from psychology. And well, he didn't even know about HCI because it didn't exist at that time. But he was interested in understanding how people work and how people select targets. So he came up with a clever apparatus. So he built something consisting mainly out of two metal plates. These are the black bars and a pan. And the pan has a metal tip. And as soon as the metal tip of the pan hits one of these plates, a circuit gets closed and thereby he could very precisely measure how long it takes to go from one metal plate, circuit closed, to the other and circuit again closed. Right? And this apparatus, he used it in order to conduct studies. He varied the size of the metal plates, so they made, he made them larger or smaller, and he varied the distance between them. So again, he made the distance larger or smaller. And while he did that, he had four different distances and four different widths. So he had two, four, eight, 16 inch distances, and he had also four different sizes, starting from a quarter of an inch, going up to two inches. And then, well, he went out and he collected participants and empirical data. And this is then the results that he found. We have on one axis, uh, the size and the distance. And on the other axis, we have the movement time or the task completion time. How long does it take to go from one metal plate to the other? And what we can see is, well, obviously, and according to our expectations, the further the target is away, the longer it takes. And the other thing that we can also observe is, the smaller the target is, that so, the longer it takes, or the other way around, the larger the target, the faster the participant is. Well, this graph follows our intuition, but it's not very helpful not to make predictions, things like uh, what happens if the, well, the target is 21 inch away and it's three inch wide. Then, yeah, well, we have some intuition about it, but we can not really come up with a number. So he also couldn't do that. Uh, so he went on and he tried to put this 
into an equation. So you had three different components to work with. The first one is the movement time. That's what you want to predict. And then the other two components are well, how wide is the target and what's the distance of the target. And you call these W and D. So D for distance and W for width. And then you had to combine these things. One thing that well, seems obvious is we can divide D by W. And that makes sense. If D increases, the movement time increases. If W increases, the movement time decreases. So if you divide one by the other, well, this kind of makes sense. Then he not only had this task with the pen and the metal plates, he had a number of different tasks. And what he learned from having different tasks with different devices, that it actually depends on the type of task or the device that people use. And so he had to cover that and he used two constants for that and he called them just A and B. So we have A plus B and now we multiply B by something. So we have to put B in relationship to D and W. And well, he realized, inspired by information theory, that if you use log of one plus D divided by W, that kind of works. So he had these different components. He had the movement time, he had A and B, and these are device specific constants, and then he had D for the distance and W for how wide is the target. He did another clever thing. Um, he realized that now we have this equation, the equation has two parts. One is device specific and the other part isn't. And for the part that isn't, is not device specific, he came up with a name for it. He called this the index of difficulty or ID. And if you have that, and this is just a definition, then we can derive that the movement time is A plus B multiplied by ID. And now ID describes how difficult the task is independent from the input device. He also had to come up with units for it. We have A, A is measured in seconds. That makes sense because movement time is also in seconds. He has B, B is measured in seconds per bit. And now this seems kind of strange, why bits, right? And this is because of his inspiration came from information theory and they, are, they also talk about bits. And then we have the index of difficulty, and if B is measured in seconds per bit, and we want to end up with seconds again in the end, then the ID has to be described in bits. If you change bits to some arbitrary other thing, it wouldn't really change a bit, but then it wouldn't depend on or rely on information theory anymore. So now we have the right tools in order to go back to our empirical data. So we had these, well, measures that we took. And now we can think about, can we reformulate this graph? Um, we have the index of difficulty, and now we replace on the x-axis the size and the distance by the index of difficulty. And on the other axis, we still have the movement time in seconds. And now we can try to put the data that we collected in our new graph. And let's look at a few examples. So let's start with, we have both D and W are two. And now we can put that into this ID equation. We have ID equals log of one plus D divided by W, D is two, W is two, so we divide two by two. And then we have one plus one and then we take the logarithmus of that and then we end up with, well, the ID is one. And now we put that into the graph, we go to the one and we can look up, oh, how long did it take for this specific target? About 200 milliseconds. And then we have our first dot in our new graph. We can continue that. Uh, let's look at another example. Um, we have 
the distance is now 16 and the target is a quarter of an inch wide. And again, D16, W quarter of an inch. And now we can put that into our equation. Um, then this is log of one plus 64, and this is roughly six. And again, we can put that in. And now we can continue and do that for all other measures. And this is what we would end up. And this kind of looks better in a way. And so let's look at that in more detail. So we now have that. And what we can realize is that, well, these dots, they now nicely fit onto a line. So if we can put the line in. And now we can figure out, well, what is the equation that describes this line? And this is then, and we could just use tools for that if we want to, but we can also look at how to figure out that, that out manually. Well, the equation then would be y equals 0.112 multiplied by x plus 0.028. And this actually fits the data quite nicely. So we have this r squared, this describes how well the data fits this line, and r squared can go up to one and is very close to one, so it very well fits the data. And now we have this equation and now we could say, hmm, what happens if you continue this graph, if you go further up or further into the distance, makes the target, the task harder and harder. And then, well, if we assume it still fits this line, then we can make predictions about that. Okay, so let's step back and look into this, this equation again. Um, if you want to figure that out, where do these two values come from? Well, if you just continue that through the uh, axis, then we could realize, well, it crosses the axis exactly at 0 0.28, 0 0.028. And um, then where can, does the other value come from? Well, it's just how strong the, the line uh, progresses upwards. Okay, so we have these two values and this equation, that's not really Fitts law, right? Uh, but we can now realize that these two values exactly fit our constants. So we have A and A is 0 0.028 and we have B and B is 0.112. And now we have everything we need in order to make predictions about new targets, right? So we have these two constants, we have the equation, we can fit everything in. And now we could wonder how long does it take to select a target uh, that is 21 inch away and three inch wide. And well, then we can again think about, well, D is 21 and W is three. Then we will divide 21 by three. And then we add one, we take the derivative of that, we multiply B and then we add A and then we end up with the result. Okay, so we have the movement time, and the movement time is 0 0.028 plus 0 0.112 multiplied by log of 1 plus 7, because 7 is just 21 divided by 3. We can continue, and then we can further figure that out. It's then the log of 8, and then this is just 3, and then we end up with 0 0.364 milliseconds, or seconds. Okay, so this is how we could do that for one specific input device. So we looked at now the pan hitting metal plates, but well, in HCI we rarely hit metal plates with pans. But what we do is we use other types of input devices. And luckily Paul Fitz also looked at other devices. So this is another task that he had in his initial studies. Uh, this is you have circles and you have to move the circles from one rod to the other and then he varied the uh, size of the, the rods and the distance of the rods. And thereby he had again the same variations, he had different sizes, different distances. And we could wonder now again, what are A and B for this task? 